What's going on YouTube? This is Big Hunt Productions and this is my first video of Airsoft on this channel. I have made other videos of Airsoft on a couple other channels, but uh, I think I'm going to finally stick to this channel and keep it going. Uh, if you guys would like to check out some of uh, our my fellow teammates channels, uh, you guys can check out Axisoft. I'll put a link to his channel in the description. Alright, so first off, this is the VFC FN Scar H. Okay, so there's not a lot of videos of the FN Scar H. This is the STD version. Ha ha, funny, funny, right? Anyways, uh, there's not there's not a lot of the Scar H on YouTube. I found a couple, but not very many. Most of the time, it's the Scar L. Um, but this is the Scar H in black. Uh, some people call it the MK17, whatever you want to call it. All right, so let's get into this. Okay, so this is what you get in the box. You get your beautiful scar. Start from the buttstock. As you guys can see, this is what you get in the box. Do not have the orange tip on. It is glued on and you have to break it off piece by piece. It is 14 millimeter negative threading. comes with one high cap magazine. I believe it's 350 rounds, maybe 500. I'm really not sure. But uh this is a pretty good gun. I'm going to get into the review here in a minute. Okay, so we're going to start from the stock and go all the way up to the barrel. So here you have a polymer stock, very sturdy. You have six positions. This is kind of hard to do with one hand. So I'm probably not going to do it, but it's six positions and it comes out you have your cheek riser here you push this in and it rises your cheek rest and you hit this button and the stock will fold on the opposite side you have your polymer lower and your full metal upper your ambidextrous selector switch now I will say uh, these scars are very notorious for having really, really bad selector switches. So if you have one of these guns, you need to make sure that you use both selector switches at the exact same time. So I'll show you guys that a little later in the video on how to use it. Uh, you have your um, mag release here, your bolt catch. It does have a functioning bolt catch. Uh, mine works every once in a while because I have been using this gun a lot. So that has been in use quite a quite a but quite a bunch. Uh, you have your full metal upper rail, side rails, and your bottom rail. You have your metal outer barrel and your metal inner barrel. Your barrel sticks out just a little bit. So when you if you take your orange tip off, I do suggest you get a barrel extension or muzzle brake or flash flash cover or whatever you want to call them. Uh, you have fold down sights here and here. You have multiple adjustments for this sight here. Show you guys that. I'll flip this side up and let you guys see that sight. If I can get the camera to focus. I might not be able to get it to focus but I don't guess I'm going to be able to, but let's flip the gun over and you guys can look at the other side. Alright, so on the other side, it's pretty much the exact same. You have the ambidextrous mag release and selector switch. Uh, this is the part that your stock will fold over to and hook to. Fold that over for you guys and let you see that. Now it's stuck on here. And your gun is much shorter, easier for you to get in and out of vehicles or in and out of rooms. So that's good. Pretty much all the same. If you'd like to, if you're a left hand user and you'd like to move the charging handle to this side, it's definitely doable. I'm going to get into the gun a little bit more. 
Okay, so I'm going to get into disassembling the gun. Uh, this may be a little difficult since I am doing this with my phone and I have to use one hand. So just bear with me, guys. Uh, I'm going to tell you how to do it, then I'm going to do it, and then I'll show you. So first thing you have to do is there's a pin right here. You need to make sure you push that pin all the way out. Once you push that pin out, you can drop your whole lower receiver. I'm going to do that really fast. Alright, so this is what it will look like separated. Uh, the pin is kind of hard to get out, so I'm just going to leave it like this. Now the gun is separated into two. Uh, you have your VFC clear hop-up unit there. Uh, I do recommend taking apart the hop-up and replacing it with M4 hop-up wheel and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is a proprietary hop-up unit, so you will have to just kind of pick with those they're not the best their vfc hoppa buckings are very nice though uh so this is the thing that kind of caught me off guard with this gun it does not have wires that run to the gearbox it has these two little pegs here that connect up into here you guys can see that so that's what you get that's how you get your uh electricity to your from your battery to your gearbox uh, there's absolutely no wires shown in the stock itself, so that's a plus. But I feel if something was to go wrong with those little studs, they'd be more of a pain to replace than having just wires. But there's that. Now I'm going to take a second, and what you do to take your stock off is literally you pull the gun apart like this and you just pull down and your whole stock will come off I'll show you that in a minute boom now your stock is off as you guys can see the stocks completely removable here's your two little pegs that go into your uh, gearbox and this is where your battery hooks up to uh, when you take this off it lets you take out the spring and spring guide to the uh, charging handle so you guys can as you can see the gun does break down pretty easy pretty simple and it allows you to store it in a much smaller case all right I'm gonna get into showing you guys the battery now okay so this is what I use I use a nanotech 1200 milliamp 11 one lipo battery uh, it's a pretty small stick type battery this gun has very limited space for a battery uh, I can fit a 1600 milliamp 9.6 volt in this but it's very very tight and it tends to rip the casing around the battery so you need to make sure you stick to a smaller battery and just keep multiple batteries on hand so let's get into this alright so the way to get into this stock here is there's a pin right here you push it out on this side. Once you get that pin out, which is pretty easy, you just pop this off, pop your butt plate off, and it reveals your black Tamiya connector. As you can see, it's very small down in here. Let's see if I can get that to stand up. And uh, it's very tight squeeze for your battery. You kind of have to mess with your battery a little bit that will fit in there but see it's kinda it's very tight so you just kinda have to pick and play with it and uh, try, try to get in there I'll show you guys that in a minute okay so after about 30 seconds fiddling with this I finally got the battery to sit in there and there be enough room for me to put the butt plate back on I had to extend the stock to around 3 to get the battery to sit down in there with enough space so like I said it's a very tight squeeze to getting in the battery okay so I reassembled the gun I have okay so there's a couple things I have to say about this gun there's advantages and disadvantages some dif disadvantages are the magazines the magazines are pretty expensive they're around $25 a mag and for someone working for minimum wage it's kinda hard to purchase a bunch of mags and have them available to them. So right now all I have is two mags. I ha and I decided to use high caps just for the reason that since they are hard to come across and hard to get, 
that I'd rather have more rounds than having mid caps and only have 300 rounds in this mag that the gun came with and then having like 120 in the other one so I went ahead and just bought a high cap just so I would have more rounds on me uh, the other thing is the battery storage like I mentioned earlier that's a pretty that's a pretty bad thing and uh, really honestly that's about it the gun performs great rate of fire on the 11 one is probably around I would say 16 to 18 rounds a second it's a pretty fast gun uh, semi-automatic is pretty snappy I feel like if you were to wire the gun to Dean's of course it would bring your RPS up around 2 and your trigger response would be much more snappy uh, the range on this gun is phenomenal uh, the hop up is very touchy so you barely turn it up too much and it's gonna curve your BB away you don't want it to go I'm using .25's in the gun and I can easily hit 150 feet uh, I need to run some two eights or maybe some threes, but uh, other than that, there's not much to complain about. The gun's body is spectacular with the trademark, so VFC always does a great job on that. Um, that's really about it. I hope to have a shooting video out for you guys here pretty soon. Thanks for watching. I torture you. Take my hand through the flame. I torture you. I'm a slave.